IFW, the international voice of freight and logistics. You're listening to IFW Radio, the voice of the freight and logistics industry. I'm Kizin Kwacha, and I'm going to be joined today by IFW's chief news hound, Mr. Damien Brett, who will be bringing you a roundup of some of the big headline-making news in the world of freight. Now, before that, I've got a note here to say that next week, IFW is running a feature on piracy. Now, we're all aware of the problem of piracy, that that's the type on water, not the online software, music Napster downloading stuff. Anyway, um, piracy, what can be done about it? More government intervention, uh, stronger sanctions, armed security contractors and ships, or perhaps a, a combination of all of those ideas. Give us your thoughts. We'd love to hear from you at our LinkedIn group, or you can email us directly at editorial at ifw net. Dot com. It'd be interesting to hear your thoughts on this for our IFW piracy feature next week, which will be the uh, spearhead of a campaign focusing on the problem of piracy and what can be done about it. Now, without further ado, let's head over to our newsroom to join Damien Brett for a roundup of the week's news in headlines. Over to you, Damien. Cheers, Kizzy, for the lovely intro. Um, it's nice to be back doing the news roundup. I haven't done it for the last few weeks. Uh, Kat, another reporter on IFW, has been deputising and doing a very good job as well. But uh, yeah, no, it's nice, nice to be back. It was like putting on an old pair of slippers or, or something like that. I don't know, I don't wear slippers, but putting on something that I wear quite often. Uh, I don't know where this is going. Uh, so on to the news anyway and uh, well the big story as the week finished that caught my eyes quite a, quite a sad story um, because it means the loss of, of quite a few jobs and uh, it's because the FDS has decided to pull out of the Irish Sea um, it's closing its last two Irish Sea services at the end of this month after it was unable to sell the routes or return them to profit uh, the FDS said the services between Dublin and Birkenhead and Haysham, which it took over when it acquired Norfolk Line in late 2009, were closed because they had made substantial losses over the last few years and the FDS was unable to return them back to profit. Um, it was not revealed how many staff would lose their job because of the closures, but the FDS said consultations had begun with 50 land-based personnel directly affected, with the aim of mitigating the consequences of any resultant redundancies. Whatever that means, I've um, been trying to figure it out, but not quite sure. Um, the FDS said the losses had been caused by considerable overcapacity on the market, the result of a sh sharp decline in demand since 2008 and I'm sure anyone that's been paying attention to the, the news has seen the, the financial problems the Irish economy is facing recently and the, the recent bailouts it's received um, which have contributed to this. Port and terminals and sales agency operations in Dublin will also be closed. Currently two row packs ships are deployed on the Birkenhead route and one row row vessel on the Haysham service. Options for the vessels and of course their crews are being investigated including sail, charter and alternative deployment on DFDS's network. One row pack ship is expected to be transferred to DFDS's Baltic route network it said. And as always, I'm just going to run down the top five most read stories from the IFW website this week. It's kind of kind of like a chart countdown that we get in the UK on Sunday of the biggest selling records, but um, a lot more exciting, I'm sure you'll agree. So the fifth most read story this week was that operations at major French ports were at a standstill last week as workers began a new round of strike action, which was due to last up until this morning. Members of the CGT union, a bit of a tongueful, announced the strike following the collapse of last Monday's talks with the government over its plans to transfer workers to the private sectors. Doc dockers, not dockers, no, yeah, dockers, not doctors, and crane drivers at Le Havre, Marseille, Fosse, Mer, Montour and Brest walked out at 6am on Wednesday and vowed not to return to work until 6am this morning. The fourth most read story of the week, with 621 views, is that businesses planning to export and import goods in 2011 need to be aware of new contract terms a top executive has advised. Nicola Horworth, I think that's how you pronounce the name anyway, 
Um, she's the MD of Midlands-based Global Freight, said that the new INCO terms, international commercial terms, in case you're wondering, introduced on the 1st of January, will affect every business that transport goods, so obviously quite important. Um, INCO terms is an internationally recognised terminology published by the International Chamber of Commerce and reviewed every 10 years to help regulate shipping and simplify the complexities of foreign trading. According to the ICC, the changes to INCO terms are necessary for many reasons, including the importance of cargo security, the resulting new obligation on traders, developments in container transport, and the 2004 revision of the US Uniform Commercial Code, which resulted in a deletion of the former US shipment and delivery terms. Wow. Um, Actually, if you want more information on that, if you go on the IFW website, BIFA, the, the British International Freight Association, have produced a little video, and uh, you can watch the video which uh, outlines the changes and how it will affect you. Uh, so yeah, www.ifw-net.com for more info. Uh, but back to the countdown, and the third most read story, with 672 views, is that Australian ports, railways and roads were closed last week across large swathes of Queensland as the worst floods for 50 years continue to cause transport chaos. Around 75% of Queensland, which is an area larger than France and Germany combined, so pretty massive, was declared a disaster zone after a month of extreme rainfall. Heavy rain also affected New South Wales and South Australia. One shipping source told IFW that transport across most of Queensland was at a standstill for much of last week. The second most read story with 762 views, and it's something I wrote, obviously it's a corker, that uh, deep sea shipping lines have again delayed rate increases on the Asia-Europe trade, this time until March, after spot rates unexpectedly slipped last week. According to the latest figures from the Shanghai Containerized Freight Index, rates on services from Shanghai to Northern Europe fell from $1,401 per TEU on 31st of December to $1,381 dollars per TEU on the 7th of January. That fall comes despite carriers announcing rate increases of $250 to $300 per TEU that were supposed to come into force on the 1st of January. However, sources said that now carriers are offering rates up until the end of March and have pushed back the rate hikes until then. One UK forwarder told IFW he felt the carriers were trying to secure future cargo which is the reason why they'd pushed rate increases back. But the most read story of last week, we need some sort of drum roll for this. Um, it'd be great if we could get that, maybe next week we can do it. Um, with 793 views, is that ferry operators on the Dover Strait are threatening to make a complaint to the UK government after the port owner announced a hike in prices for 2011. Last year, Dover Harbour Board announced an increase in its harbour dues for 2011 of 4.8%, a move which ferry operators that use the port said was surprising. P&O ferries and DFDS Seaways, which previously operated the Norfolk Line, said that unless DHB began negotiations with them, they would file a Section 31 complaint with the Department of Transport. I don't know if you followed the, the kind of twos and throws on the Dover Strait, but the operators filed a similar complaint in 2010, following rate increases by DHB then. Uh, if the government decides it agrees with the operators, it can force the port to rescind the increases. Right, well, that's everything from me. I hope you've enjoyed our news roundup and our countdown of the most read stories. If you want more information on any of the stories I've mentioned, you can visit ifw-net.com and find them there. Um, or you can email me at damien.brett at informer.com if you've got a story you'd like us to cover. Okay, take care and see you soon. IFW, the international voice of freight and logistics.